Hello and good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Today I am concerned and I usually get very sober after any conversations with Gert van den Bosch. And so just a couple of days ago, I had another interview with Gert and his view as usual is very sobering and he is worried. And every time I speak with him, I get worried myself. And I have an image beside me here that's showing what appears to be a tsunami that is just about to happen. And this is what I feel like. It's just difficult to know about timing. Here is what I perceive the tsunami coming towards this town by the sea as deaths are rising. Now, why am I talking about this today? As I said, part of it is due to Gert. The other part is that I've got uh, on my substack this very good summarization from uh, Dr. Rob Runnenbaum, who was in, involved in the interview, where he went through Gert's book in some detail, looking at some of the topics that people struggle with. So it's well worth taking a look on the, um, on the site. You can see here the link to the video, as well as the time codes for this valuable summation. So if you are interested, absolutely, you have to make sure that you take a look. But even before that, my concern was triggered first by the conversation with Gert and secondly, by a tweet that I had seen just today. And as usual, I give credit to whoever has done the tweet. And this is from Ben M looking at mortality. And he says, if vaccines are so effective, then why is the mortality rate at record highs? And he shows an image here of age standardized standardized mortality rate for Canada. And so what I've done is I have then gotten the actual site and this is what it looks like. And the link is below if you want to play around with the numbers. And so you can see this in a bit more detail here. And it's showing you the general trend in terms of age standardized mortality was going down. And this band here represents the um, the upper limits and upper and lower limits. It's going down quite nicely until 2019. Then we have the pandemic in 2020. There's a slight decrease in 2021. And then at the end of 2022, this is where we are. And 2022 is actually the highest it has been since they've been measuring since 2011. Now, that's very, very strange. If there is so much, so many lives being saved, why are people dying? And this is the bit that takes me back to an article that I had done almost a year ago. And I was looking at a prediction that I was concerned about occurring with regards to the next phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is my article here. And this was done in July, 2022. At the time, it actually got censored on LinkedIn because they said that what I was saying was ridiculous. I was saying, are you prepared for the COVID-19 tsunami? And it's the same image. And what I was talking about here was the autoimmune research that I had been focused on. And this is the image here that basically says that our research suggested that the, the free ACE2 binds to the viral spike protein, gets picked up by the immune system, and it makes autoantibodies. And this is all paper here that was published in 2021, Theory of Autoimmunity Against Days 2 Explained, um, on, in Frontiers. And there's nothing that I have seen so far that would change my perspective. At this point, I was concerned about three types of COVID. You had acute respiratory COVID, and I said that these presentations will be reduced as the majority of the population has been either exposed to COVID-19 or vaccinated. That was my thought, and that's what happened. However, subacute autoimmune COVID-19 could present in many different ways, thromboembolic disease, that's heart attack, stroke, peripheral vascular disease, immune exhaustion, unusual neurological presentations, worsening frailty and confusion in the elderly, rapid lung deterioration after COVID-19 infection, plus organ dysfunction post-COVID. So all of this that I had been talking about 
I had predicted almost a year ago. That was in July. We are now in June. My concern is that, one, it's very difficult to understand about timing and even more difficult if we don't do any kind of anticipatory work. So here is the bit about Canada that I find interesting. And Canada I've been following for some time. So I've taken some data from the Government of Canada's website. This is their COVID-19 vaccination coverage. So Government of Canada, and this is updated, last updated on the 5th of the 5th, 2023. And when we look at the groups in terms of the age groups, you can see here, um, cognitive percentage of people who have been vaccinated, you can see that in the over 80 groups, it's almost 99%, the 97, 95, 90, 90, 88, 86. And even in the 12 to 17 age group, it is 83%. Now that is remarkable. And so Justin Trudeau would be feeling very happy that he has managed to implement such a system that vaccinated the whole population. And under normal circumstances, that would be good, except if COVID-19 is an autoimmune disease where potentially vaccination can exacerbate that autoimmune problem. Well, who is to tell? When we look at the image here, again, it shows only even the 12 to, this, is, this one here is the 5 to 11 age group, that's almost 50% vaccinated in Canada. So this is a country that has significantly invested in the vaccination program. So with that in mind, why would you have mortality rising? Remember, 817 versus 811, it's rising higher than it has ever been over the past 10 years. Yet they're almost significant percentage of the population has been vaccinated. What are they dying of? That's the next question, because if they've been vaccinated, they shouldn't be dying with regards to COVID-19. What really would they be dying of? Well, when you look carefully again at the statistics, and this is now showing the hospital usage of the ICU beds, and this is up to date up to June 6, 2023. And they're showing the total numbers of patients who are hospitalized by COVID-19. And you can see here the trend seems to be going down. But if you look carefully, this was in 2020. And the peak of Delta here in 2021 is just a bit higher than where it is today. Most of the patients are not in ICU beds. But the patients who are in ICU are lower and the patients who are ventilated are lower. So this again fits in with exactly what I had been saying. When I thought about what would be happening in terms of COVID-19, we would be seeing a different pattern of disease. And I go back to what I had predicted just over a year ago. This is suggesting that this is more about the subacute autoimmune COVID-19 where they don't have severe lung problems, but they are having significant other conditions that are likely to be triggered by the autoimmunity that we predicted from March 2020. There's no pleasure with being able to say, I think I identified this early, because my biggest concern has been that there has been no focus on mitigation strategies. Because if there is no acknowledgement that this is happening, that this is part of the problem that we need to delineate, there is no opportunity to mitigate. Based on what Gert has been saying with regards to a more uh, dangerous uh, virus um, variant coming forward, and when you combine it with those autoimmune patterns, we have one heck of a tsunami coming towards us. What can we do? What's our first thing to do is to acknowledge, then to research to mitigate. Just a reminder, if you want to see the summary by Dr. Rob Renenbaum, please click on the link below for Substack and you'll be able to read it there and watch it for free. Have a great evening, everyone. 
I hope that this was of value to you and I look forward to speaking to you again.